Ricky. Hello po! Pa-out shout! Ay, <laughs> shout out pala. <laughs> Oh, out. Oh, yeah. Inspired na, inspired na talaga ako sa'yo, ha? Talagang, please, like ka din dito. And so, I'm trying to look for you, but I cannot find you <laughs> in, the, in the YouTube. Anyways, good morning, everyone. Ohayo gozaimasu. Today is a very good day. Napakaganda po ng araw ngayon. Medyo chilly kasi umulan kahapon. Kaya yeah, medyo, hindi naman magina. Yeah. Just perfect time to have a, a good uh, base run. So today we will have a 10 kilometer run. So the other day I used it, yeah, I just wear, uh, wash and wear in Japan. It's a very good time to wash and wear. Because <laughs> I only have this, I have few clothes I brought in Japan. Uh, shirts I just wash and wear <laughs> so I can use the next day so today as I mentioned today we will have a base run so base run is uh, normally done at um, the pace of uh, normal pace of the runner natural pace of the runner and yeah we're not preparing for any marathon race this time but at least we maintain our um, uh, endurance or fitness level at the moment so we have some uh, runs for the week such as this aside from the long run and also as i mentioned warm up is very important and uh, what we usually do is when i was still at the university after running for example uh, 10 minutes uh, 5 to 10 minutes slow run and then we do some drills also like uh, lunges or some uh, back runs so i think uh, very important to do some warm-ups to circulate uh, the body parts that will be uh, used mainly so please don't forget to warm up okay so now it's starting to get a little warm so we will start the run bye bye <laughs> a few moments later ngayon po ay nasa 6.16 kilometer mark na so mga three three more kilometers to go at as you saw red this stop muna tayo ah hindi sa gusto na na namin mag stop di ba Diba? Diba? Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! Ay, shout out pala. <laughs> Sandali. Kuya. Oh, shout sa'yo. <laughs> okay. Shout, mainit! Pero wala tayong karapatang magsabing mainit kasi mas mainit nga sa Pilipinas, di ba? A few moments later. Oh. Ouch out! <laughs> wala na akong energy, Mr. Ouch out! Basta, ah, shout out wala! <laughs> Anyways, tapos din tayo. Otskaro sa Madeshta. Tapos na tayo sa ating uh, 10 km uh, base run. At uh, ngayon, um, ano lang, yung parang natural pace so ang average pace ko my average pace usually on this type of run is uh, 530 to 540 uh, minutes per kilometer so I, I usually maintain that pace for this type of uh, of uh, run so for me yeah this is <laughs> just a normal run and um, yes later on uh, we will try to drink uh, at, uh, some how to say in japan we noticed like in supermarket there are many types of uh, maybe functional foods you know some drinks that are uh incorporated or encapsulated how you may term with some functional compounds or bioactives they call and for example there is this one drink in japan made by a japanese company that is a normal sports drink you you you, you when you look at it it's like just the normal aqua aquarius or pokari sweat but if you check on it there is uh, some unique bioactive that was put and that is a catechin 540 milligrams of catechin and uh, 
Catechin is a type of polyphenol, good for um, uh, serves as an antioxidant. So <laughs> later, please uh, watch out. We will check out this drink and explain to you what are these type of polyphenols and how they are very beneficial to our human body. So for now, that's all. Oh, I will try to stand up and uh, walk now and uh, go back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ouch out, kuya. Ouch out, kuya. Ouch out. A few moments later. And we're back! <laughs> Ouch! Ay! A shout out pala. Hello po, kuya. Sobrang na-mention ka na dito sa vlog kong ito, ha? And uh, as I have mentioned, after our 10-kilometer run a while ago, I said that uh, in the supermarkets here in, J in Japan, we find a lot of uh, functional foods and we say functional foods because normally these are products that uh, have been incorporated with some um, additional nutrients aside from the nutrient that the food itself already have. And uh, one of the very interesting topics in the health industry today is uh, so-called the polyphenols. Polyphenols. So, <laughs> and mga so actually, Polyphenol, I maring narinig nyo na during some chemistry class <laughs> or biology class or some some other class in science. But um, polyphenols are very interesting because uh, they have been used and um, they have been promoted for the improvement of our health and wellness. So just uh, a background, polyphenols is a collective term for all the secondary uh, metabolites that we found and are naturally occurring in um, our plant sources. And um, I want to put emphasis on health promotion because as I have said, um, this type of uh, compounds have been found by studies to have uh, um, antioxidant, and uh, anti-inflammatory um, properties or activities which the body uh, needs especially if we the body have a lot of stress or the body is fighting for some viruses especially now like a uh, virus nga ng um, covid so it is uh, of interest because this type of um, phenolic compounds have been also incorporated to our food products. As we have said uh, previously, these um, compounds have already been found naturally in the plants, but then, or some other foods, but then nowadays the trend is to incorporate it more to the food products for different purposes. Um, it may be for easier accessibility or bioavailability of uh, this type or target compounds, especially for consumers who uh, have some, uh, for example, uh, digestion or absorption problems like uh, our um, elderly people whose uh, digestive uh, systems are already, um, already decreasing or have become degrading. So today, um, siguro I would like to first show some trends. Thank you, uh, Food and Nutrition Research Institute of uh, the Department of Science uh, and Technology. Uh, hello po <laughs> sa mga taga DRSC and F, uh, uh, FNRI. And uh, please allow me to use some of your data for a while. Just to see here closely that this is the trend of the um, overweight and obese among adults in the Philippines sa ating pong bansa, mga kambayan. And nakita po natin na over the years from 1993 to 2018, nung makuha pong datang to, yung prevalence po of overweight and obesity have been increasing. So this is a bit alarming because Obesity is a big problem and it may eventually result to other um, diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, etc. And so we're trying to, to help as uh, food scientists to be able to help 
at least lessen um, this uh, obesity through uh, food and nutrition. Actually, obesity may be uh, a result of uh, different um, uh, factors. It may be um, the lifestyle, of course. It may be the food or nutrition that we have. It's it's a it's a different uh, factors that um, related. But today we would like to be of help in decreasing this uh, prevalence of overweight through food and nutrition. And here is the trend in the Philippines. But um, if we compare it with some uh, some countries in the um, developed countries, we can see from this data that uh, among the countries in the developed um, world, we can see that Japan and Korea, one of our Asian neighbors, have uh, very low obesity rates among um, adult population of 15 years and over. This is a data from uh, 2016 from OECD. Uh, from OECD and uh, here we can see that the prevalence in Korea for example is 5.5 percent as compared to Japan which is 4.2 percent and this we compare with other uh, developed countries which is uh, 40 percent and one of the very interesting uh, facts from this data is that we see that Korea and Japan, our Asian neighbors, have very low obesity rates. And uh, we may try to speculate why it happens. And uh, the speculation may be of a different, it may be caused by different factors. But we think that one of the factors that uh, result to this very low in obesity rates in the, these countries is that uh, as you may notice, both Korea, Japan, and even China is not um, uh, indicated here, but these two countries are consuming uh, high, high levels of uh, green tea or tea in general. So they have different types of tea. And this one we do not see much in the Philippines because yeah, in Philippines we like of course uh, soda or some juice, fruit juices. Ganyan no na miss ko rin po yung situ, <laughs> situ natin sa Philippines. Hello po, Miliver. And uh, um, and you notice as we notice here, for example, here in Japan, the tea is totally um, bitter. It it is not sweet at all. So when they say tea, even in the bottled one has no uh, sugar at all so what we're trying to point out is that these two countries have been consuming a lot of uh, these tea products and um, we think that it may have contributed to the ha uh, low levels of obesity rates in these countries and one of the very interesting uh, component of this tea is that it contains high levels of uh, polyphenols. And uh, we have already mentioned previously that this polyphenols is just a collective term for all the plant secondary metabolites. And among the polyphenols, one of the phenolic compound type is the so-called catechin. So this type of phenolic compound also belongs uh, to the polyphenols. And uh, this type of phenolic compound catechin is mainly found on the, this type of food products and uh, i have just chosen three types that long types na po yung gusto ko discuss and just to compare yung amount ng catechin for example ng tea against uh, some of the um, food products that's also very interesting and also very delicious so for example a 100 gram of uh, tea contains 10 to 80 milligrams of uh, this catechin so this type of 10 to 80 range uh, is different uh, they, just to be safe because there are different types of tea and uh, they may be black tea green tea for example but in general this is the range and uh, each tea has different amount of catechin and uh, in comparison with the other foods for example uh, chocolate I, I suppose this is dark chocolate 
<laughs> so, this is a good reason to eat more dark chocolate. And dark chocolate contains around 46.61 uh, milligrams of uh, this catechin compound, polyphenol compound. And finally, for example, in the European countries, for example, in France, Italy, um, uh, red wine is very popular. And it also contains a lot of polyphenols or catechins, which is ranging from around 80 to 30 milligrams. So this is very important as we know that uh, this uh, green tea, for example, has very high levels of uh, the catechin. And um, catechin, um, according to many, many studies, uh, are very good for uh, lipid or fat loss. So they have been proven to be um, a very, uh, very effective against yung mga pag, uh, tunaw daw ng taba, yan, ganyan, or uh, some other antioxidation uh, also properties. So now, actually this uh, catechin is very, very interesting, lalo na here in Japan, because I ha as I have said, um, there are many, many tea products here, bottled products here, and normally the green tea, which is bottled around, bottled you know, 250 ml, around 250 ml is uh, 100 yen, and it is plain green tea, because green tea in itself already have some catechins, right? But one of the products from a, one of the products from a Japanese uh, company is this one, I bought, we just bought, and yeah. This is Herusha, Herusha water, Erusha water and water and sports sudo drink. So this is basically a sports drink. So it's like the Aquarius or uh, uh, Pokari, Pokari sweat. But one very unique about this drink is that uh, this company tried to load or encapsulate this bioactives. So can you imagine like um, putting uh, uh, this uh, this catechin into this is sports drink. So, di ba, hindi lang talaga siya pang sports, hindi lang siya for rehydration, but also putting this one, catechins, 540 milligrams. So, I'll check on, I'll get back to you with kung ilan ba yung recommended daily intake sa isang araw ng catechins. But, I think uh, this this 540 milligrams still abides the daily recommended daily allowance for catechin because uh, I believe di naman nila ilalagay ito if it's more than the RDA. Anyway, just I want to point out is that aside from the 540 milligrams catechin, meron din siyang vitamin C, meron din siyang mga citric acid, but a big component that is put is the the catechin. So, dito siya makikita. Okay, maybe not so clear in the video, but it's over here. I put, I want to put emphasis on this catechin. 540 milligrams. And this is uh, a lot of catechin. <laughs> That's why when you try to drink it, actually, it's it's still, let us check. Yeah. It, at first, it tastes like the normal uh, sports drink, oral rehydration sports drinks, like Aquarius or Pokari. But, medyo bitter siya. There's still the very bitter taste due to the catechins. And actually, some, some, some foods which are bitter, for example, uh, yeah, yun nga yung green tea, uh, some of them become bitter and, um, and some pungent, pungent taste dahil nga dun sa catechins. And uh, actually, we tried to check on the uh, company profile why they wanted to add the catechins here. Uh, and um, at first, yeah, the main target is really for fat loss. So we 
think we speculate that it is the because they put in a sports drink so we think that uh, probably the main reason why they add this is the combination of uh, exercise and also some nutritional components which have uh, fat loss activities such as catechins can in combination have a uh, higher um, functionality for reducing or reducing uh, the weight or improving weight loss so this is our speculation but uh, we don't know <laughs> the real reason if cow is listening probably please explain more further <laughs> right. but aside from this uh, herusha water there's still a lot of uh, drinks out there especially from this company and they also have like uh, just green tea and uh, the green tea also the same they also concentrate they also incorporate the catechin same levels of catechin 540 milligrams in the drink and of course um, it still depends we do not re really recommend still depends on the people's uh, consumers perception about drinking this but yeah for just trying <laughs> we and for explanation we show you this Arusha water and uh, yeah the one because 540 milligrams is very very bitter if you taste it as compared to a normal cream tea and they also have the diluted form of that I think probably more they put a lot more water so that the bitterness will be reduced and they also have uh, this type and uh, yeah for those who love soda they also have the soda version of this herusha drink with 540 milligrams of catechin and uh, this is just an example of one of the i think we can say a functional food here we find in japan that uh, i think i don't normally see yet in the philippine market but uh, for our fellow Filipinos, so you can uh, please comment below what may be some other functional foods that we already find in the Philippines or in your country. And we try to compare also with this that we find in in um, Japan. So this is just one uh, of the examples. So maybe we will tackle more later <laughs> on some of our other vlogs. And um, as I mentioned previously, uh, this catechin has been mainly studied for fat fat loss fat, mainly for fat fat or lipid um, lipid uh, oxidation but in uh, a study very recent study in just published in 2019 a group of uh, researchers found out that aside from its oxidative antioxidation or uh, yeah uh, and um, antioxidative uh, properties this compounds the catechin has also been found to improve the protein synthesis and also here just to simply put it has also been reducing protein degradation and this is very important because aside from its um, fat loss uh, activity antioxidant activity they uh, already find that it can improve the um, or promote the synthesis of uh, the proteins which is very very important for people such as our elderly people nowadays because one of the problems during aging is also muscular de uh, degrad uh, degeneration and uh, one of the collective terms for all these skeletal or muscular problems is called sarcopenia and um, this is uh, of course brought about by maybe different factors already when they were young but it goes to show that this type of uh, polyphenols they do not only work for fat but now it has been showing a, a good future for improving the protein which means that the um, Probably, if uh, these catechins are incorporated more to the food of elderly people, they may reduce the impacts of uh, uh, skeletal or muscular uh, problems 
when they age. So this is very important uh, uh, findings for our current situation, especially now that uh, our world has become a Vietnam aging society, especially, of course, here in Japan. And uh, here in Japan, they're also trying to make more of this uh, functional foods catering to the um, elderly market. As we know, of course, there's a big population of our elderly or adults here in Japan. So that's why probably there are also more um, elderly friendly uh, products that we find in, uh, in, in, in Japan compared to other products. But it will be very nice if we also see what are the functional products that you can find in your countries and also, of course, in the Philippines now, kung ano po yung mga nakikita natin produkto. But for now, we just want to put emphasis on the role of this good type of polyphenols. And don't worry, if you cannot find the polyphenols or catechins in kung wala talaga, for example, there is no tea in your places or of course there are no red wines or chocolates it may be fun it can still be found in other food products such as foods for uh, uh, vegetables and fruits like for example berries yan, mga grapes kanyan. they also have uh, very high uh, polyphenols which are also good for improving our health so and the main point here is the importance also of eating uh, the fruits and vegetables because in nature they're really high in nutrients that we really need so I hope that uh, this encourage you to eat more healthy especially adding more polyphenols in your diet so not only now and but thinking about the future as we age so <laughs> salamat po ng marami thank you so much for listening to this talk and I'm very much uh, thankful to everyone. Salamat po. Ouch, out. <laughs> and just to, yeah, shout out also. Shout out. Correct na. My t-shirt is a gift from my father <laughs> during my graduation. This is a shirt from you. So just I want to show because I normally don't wear uh, shirts, this type of shirts here in Japan. I use usually plain <laughs> so salamat po and to my uh indonesian friends and other muslim friends out there uh ramadan uh, mubarak salamat po thank you